Sender? Yes, ma'am. It is setting up. Okay. okay. Just, just one, one moment. Now, sir, our meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Yes. Yes, started. Sir, we may start. Okay. A very good and warm morning to everyone. I welcome you all on behalf of the Internal Quality Assurance Cell of Atmaram Snatan Dharma College. I, on behalf of IQAC, welcome Professor R K Singh, Dean and Head of the Department of Commerce, University of Delhi. Sir, we are really honoured to have you with us. We are glad that Professor Singh took out time for us, and it would be a pleasure to hear you speak. Professor R K Singh is presently head and dean department of commerce university of delhi an alumnus of delhi school of economics and he has worked with the shriram college of commerce before joining the commerce department his specialization is organizational behavior and human resource management he has a number of national and international publications to his credit published by the springer emerald etc in the broad domain of managing human resources with focus with focus on effectiveness and spirituality he has been editor of business analyst now on editorial board and reviewers panel mm -hmm. of various mm -hmm. journals professor singh has more than 28 years of experience not only in the field of teaching but also corporate training consultancy and administration he has held various positions of responsibility including deputy dean academic activities chairman governing body of bharti college university of delhi etc he is a member of numerous board of studies and courses committee of different universities the recent initiative department college interface is giving momentum among academic circles once again sir i welcome you to this webinar thank you so much professor singh is going to speak on the topic covid 19 managing uncertainties before we start with this webinar i would like to call upon our principal dr gyantosh kumar jha to formally welcome professor singh good morning to all uh, on behalf of arst college i welcome my friend and colleague and uh, my well wisher professor ritesh kumar singh in this webinar and you all it is a great pleasure for me and indeed an honor for me to welcome uh, professor singh in this webinar uh in fact you you all don't know that professor singh is not a scholar of commerce and management but he is a, a poet and kissago also so he has a versatile personality and uh, in fact i am very happy that he is with us in this webinar and uh, he is going to uh, talk about uh, how to manage uncertainty in this covid 19 so i am glad and once again i welcome you all and i welcome professor singh thank you so much for taking out your valuable time for our college and for this webinar thank you and i want to congratulate my webinar team uh, committee members especially dr vinita tuli dr baljit uh, anupriya ravinder dr anju bajaj raghavendra pande manvend uh, they have arranged this uh, webinar for us for everyone thank you so much to my team members and once again welcome professor singh thank you thank you sir now i invite professor singh good morning everyone good morning sir good morning, good morning sir. sir good morning sir good morning respected the uh, principal of atmaram sanatan dharm college jantosh jha dr thuli who is uh, heading the iqac of the college 
the webinar organizing team, the scholars joining us in this webinar from different parts of the country. Academic and their students. My compliments to the college. The skipper of the college, Dr. Cha and his team. And uh, a special thanks to two persuaders, Anupriya and Baljeet, who made me to be with you today. I'm thankful to all of you who are with us on a very topical theme. COVID-19, how to look at uncertainties and how to manage it. Today is 40th day of lockdown. So roughly six weeks have gone in this lockdown. It is uh, making us to experience a new world. Couple of geologies, one of them is lockdown, other is quarantine, the other social distancing, and many more. In last six weeks, it has become the part of our extended self. These words taken from a different language has been owned even by illiterates who doesn't know anything about English. Maybe this is one way of looking at that how language gets mutated, how language finds adoption. The term which we are using these days, social distancing, roughly 100 years back, in 1925, a psychologist, Imori Bogardas, coined this term to be used in a different context to see how diversity finds its place and people from the different social background, how do they find acceptance in working in one setup, in one organizational setup. But now it is being used in entirely different way. This is the new avatar of social distancing. When uh, I look at this COVID, I am reminded of what roughly four and a half centuries ago, English writer William Shakespeare said that What's in a name? This COVID-19, the abbreviation of Corona virus disease 2019, it comes from a 
combination of beautiful two words novel and corona that is why this virus is called as novel corona novel which talks about something new and corona a latin word which implies the crown crown in whatever context if somebody is getting crown it is a matter of great celebration but this protein spike crown of this virus is creating a lot of hazard so the two beautiful words the crown and new when put together and becomes the novel corona this name is very monstrous <clears throat> actually corona disease and the corona virus is not new corona is very old and if we talk about the outbreak even in 2003 there was the first outbreak of corona virus in china at that time this disease was named as sars severe acute respiratory syndrome after 19 years again there was a second outbreak of uh, corona virus disease in 2012 it was in saudi arabia and this time this the disease was named as mers middle east respiratory syndrome if we have already seen two outbreaks of this disease what is causing so much worry to us maybe the first outbreak the sars it has a known origin that was wild civil cat and the second outbreak that has also a known origin that is camels but even after 6 months of covid 19 we have not been able to trace that what is the origin of this disease is the anonymity is the disguise of the origin of covid 19 the cause of worry is this what worrying the scientists that they have not been able to find out even after 6 months that how it originated <clears throat> initially we were told that it started with the bat but later on who went for refuting it and says that the origin is still not known this covid 19 which is making globe to go for lockdown to maintain a restraint to stay at home not to come out is this causing worry is life without restraints without weekends without partying without outing this life with withouts is this the cause of worry or what in psychology we call as parasite avoidance behavior preventing us from maintaining a contact with the infected person is that the cause of worry whatever is the cause of worry it is spreading a lot of anxiety giving high creating high pressure conditions giving horrifying experiences and creating a lot of 
uncertainties. To me, as humans are trained to see things from known category, using the lens of available knowledge, what is there in our repertoire, and any new thing which is seen through that lens, if it is not fitting in the schema of what the knowledge has been acquired in the past, maybe that creates a lot of confusion. Maybe that creates a lot of anxiety and uncertainty. So there is a need to reflect that is the situation which is prevalent today is alarming or available category of knowledge what we have is insufficient to analyze and synthesize the situation. I'm not going to give you any big gyan my interaction with you is only based on my reflections of the situation. As a member of the working class, I used to have a desire that to take off from the work. to go for some time away from mundane routine work. But this given distancing from the work, which is in a way supporting what the deep desire used to be earlier, in last 40 days, after joy and the euphoria of the first few days, it has started causing more frustration. And this needs to be addressed. In this process of staying at home, and to extend the span of knownness, we have been excessively seeking the information. And excessive seeking of the information and obsessive consuming of that information has resulted into burnout. Because a lot many things about the situation, the root cause of the situation are unknown, uncertain. There is a tendency in the humans, rumination, that whenever we come across any disease, we always look at the ills of the disease and start thinking that will this disease catch me? I have, I'm also finding the similar kind of the symptoms. So in the present COVID-19 times, the core immunization is further adding to the problem. So there is a need to reflect that is this coronavirus pandemic causing the is the cause of the anxiety or our low risk literacy is the cause of the anxiety i'm sharing with you 
the today's available approximated data to put forth my point. We have roughly 1.37 billion population and till morning today, whatever the source was available to me on net, we have active 33,050 cases, out of which 8,325 cases are cured. And out of total cases, 1,074 deaths have been reported, reported till morning. So this 33,050, it comes to 0.002% of the total population. 1,074 deaths, that amounts to 0.00078% of the population. If we talk about the rate of cure of infected people, it is approximately 25%. On the similar lines, you can see the world data. If mortality rate is so low, and rate of curing is so high and percentage of infected people is meager, then what is causing the worry? Time and again, organizations after organizations, governmental agencies, international agencies have been focusing that this disease is deadly if it is combined with some other diseases in the infected persons. Therefore, there is a need to revisit the available information and to see that the anxiety, worry, the uncertainty how it could be seen using a different lens. Perhaps we are seeking yesterday, adhering to pre-pandemic period, which is the cause of disappointment, anxiety, and depression. I will take three cases to take my argument further. Work from home. Majority of us are working from home in our own way. This home working has been in the agenda in the working agenda of big organizations and psychologists, management practitioners, theoreticians, they have been talking about work-life balance. They have been talking about flexi hours. They have been talking about one of the solutions for achieving work-life balance as home working, work from home. Organizations used to take pride that they used to give forced leave. They used to make their employees to stay at home 
forcibly to work from home. But if this work from home in present times has been mandated in this pandemic period across the globe, making us to revisit work-life balance issue, this new normal, why are we anxious? New terms like virtual private network, VPN, Zoom, Microsoft Team, House Party, Google Meet, are the terms which were unknown to us a couple of weeks back. But appreciating our adaptability that in the last three, four weeks, we have been able to find out a new meaning which was hidden in us. And we have adopted these platforms and thinking about how to take it forward. The way Some of you have asked that, what is the scope of new business? The way we are bringing office to our homes in present pandemic times, maybe in times to come, a new kind of home architecture would emerge, where office place in your home would be mandatory for you to get an offer of a job. Maybe the government agencies, they will make a place for office in the home mandatory while looking at the architecture of your house. Maybe for teachers in this country who are having their one of the basic eligibility as net examination, qualifying the net examination mandatory to enter into academics. Maybe the some examination qualifying, certifying you that you can use VPN would be mandated in times to come. So to me, it appears that we are redefining and redesigning our homework relationship, which is opening up a new vista. And if it comes into reality on a lighter note, the males would be subjected to work under two bosses, the wife and Wi-Fi. There are some problems associated with working from home. And if these problems are addressed, referred, then what the claims we were making in our yesterday that to strike work-life balance, we should be made to stay at home and work from home. That reality was not true. So this present times has created another dialectics. And what Adam Grant, a psychologist from US says that we should not talk about work-life balance. We should talk about work-life rhythm. So there is a need to 
revisit the concept of work life balance and find out that how the rhythmic pace between the two could be reached achieved easy accessibility of electronic media and means of acquisition of information made me to watch thousands of the workers assembling at mumbai central demonstration by migrants in surat city flocking of migrant labor at anand vihar and in other different parts of the country giving us rise to think giving a rise to a new meaning of the world home these laborers couple of years back or months back in search of better living which was not available at their native place in their villages they left that place and moved to cities but this covid period has made them to go back to their home which they deserted a couple of years back ek behtar zindagi ki talash mein wo gaon se shehar aaye the aur is mushkil ke daur mein aaj unhe yaad अपना वो गांव अपना घर आ रहा है एक बेहत सो कॉल बेहतर जिंदगी को छोड़ के कमतर जिंदगी की तरफ उनका जाना दिस इज गिविंग अ राइस टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ होम इन प्रेजेंट टाइम्स दे वर फ्रस्ट्रेटेड when they were there at home but in difficult times of today they find their investment in relationship there in village in their home that would be able to hold them in this difficult time not the town the city the metros where they came in search of something good i recall a couple of years back once i was i come from a farmer's family once i was talking to my father so he said that these days the farming has become very difficult because of the migration of the labor and laborers in search of something so called good living they leave villages and they prefer working in factories though for arduous hours maybe his statement will get negated in the post corona period and a new socio economic texture will emerge where cities will have a shortage of labor 
and the villages will have abundance of the supply. This again opens a new vista, creates one opportunity, at the same time creates a challenge that that abundance of supply, how we are going to address in times to come. Some of your questions are coming from the economic situation in post corona period. I will narrate a very recent story of China. As things got settled, so labor who had gone to their villages in COVID-19 period, they started coming back to cities. But there they found a very strange situation. That factory owners, they were not letting them to work in their factories because Chinese economy largely depends on exports. And in present times where the exports have been stopped, marginalized, then the factories are not having new orders. And in big way, the retrenchment and the laying off is going on in China. And at public transport places, China is finding laborers going back to their villages, their homes for completely getting settled there and uprooting themselves from the cities. So a new kind of economics is emerging in this period. It has its pluses and it has its minuses. And what we have been talking about, the smart cities, it is high time in order to make a new India, to create a smart villages, to let a small and medium enterprises in big way, getting open in villages to accommodate this reversal of migration of labor and create an anchorage to this labor that what city where they went to find out a better living that was not able to hold them for a couple of weeks in difficult times. Second issue is virtual relationship. Up till a few days back, Technology pessimists and techno optimists who are raising eyebrows on virtual relationship. <clears throat> Talking about that, the virtual relationship which is replacing the actual relationship is very detrimental and the machines are replacing humans. But you think about a situation, the present lockdown, a lockdown without internet, a lockdown without TV, without laptop, without smartphones, without smart gadgets. 
maybe this lockdown without these electronic gadgets the platforms to create the virtual relationship it would have given us experience close to prison getting locked up so therefore there is need to appreciate that the vices of one get converted into virtues in other situation and maybe a new socio virtual reality is emerging where working effectively from a distance is made more possible more feasible as it has been tested in the present difficult times third issue the technology which has made a lot of progress there the business model which we call as networked business model which went for spreading its wings and creating a very challenging and threatening situation for local retailers offline retailers but in these difficult times the online the online network model of business has miserably failed got hampered and those who are they are not able to make supplies in time barring very few and techno friendly marketers who were visualizing that in times to come the shopping would be concentrated either through malls the hypermarkets or online vendors they have been their thinking has been challenged because in present times the offline vendors the local retailers the ready walas they have come to our rescue therefore <clears throat> there is a need to revisit home work relationship virtual real relationship offline online relationship city village relationship and maybe to accept that these are the realities which are made to who exist when i reflect the experiences i see the experiences of present times am i worried about the restrictions imposed on commuting or i'm worried about my luxury needs not getting fulfilled or i'm not able to address the luxury and utility dialectics there is a need to revisit to whatever limited number of friends i have spoken during this period i find majority of them are able to prepare the dishes of their choice what they used to like without going to restaurants are able to get their inner desires fulfilled without having accessibility of 
markets. And in present times, when we are made to stay at home, which is giving opportunity for environment getting bettered, ozone layer getting repaired, getting, giving freedom to birds to chirp, Yamuna to have a sparkling water. Introverts, there are researches that introverts in the present times, they are able to speak up more as compared to extroverts. This present time is making us to more to enjoy the sound of silence. It is the present times that in this webinar, in otherwise situation, the hundreds, those who are joining this webinar from different parts of country, they would have been made to come to one place And one individual would have reached there or few individuals would have reached there to have the interaction. But it is the present time, which is making the hundreds to stay at their place. And one individual or individuals transcending the space, time and geography, reaching to few hundreds, creating a new meaning of efficiency. Why not in present times, the joy of missing out is taking over the fear of missing out. JOMO taking over FOMO. This fear of unknown This creates a narrow vision, not letting us to look at a bigger picture. And here I will narrate uh, the story of Buddha. Gyantosh ji was talking about that I narrate his stories. Once a disciple of Buddha asked that master, if I'm hit by an arrow, what will happen? So Buddha said, that, no, hold on, hold on. Let me ask this question to you. That if you are hit by an arrow, what will happen? So the disciple said that, I will feel pain. So Buddha said that if you are hit by second arrow, then what will happen? So he said that I will have addition in the pain. So Buddha said that if you will be hit by the third arrow, what will happen? So disciple said, that master, I will have further addition there in the pain. And every arrow will keep on adding something to the pain. Buddha said it means after first arrow, all rest arrows are creating the similar kind of experience in varying degree. This is cause of misery. It was not clear to disciple. And Buddha said that when you were hit by the first arrow and you felt the pain, knowing that every subsequent hitting of the arrow will cause the pain, 
in this whole process of feeling the pain where are you in the present context the first arrow is corona novel corona virus which has hit the humanity causing pain but the subsequent arrows coming from fear coming from anxiety coming from frustration coming from depression we can have a control over th these on first arrow we may not have any control but on subsequent arrows we have a control because the subsequent arrows are causing more psychological emotional and mental pain the first arrow is coming from the natural world but the subsequent arrows are coming from the psychological world and as a human being it becomes our utmost responsibility to address this psychological world which has been created by us which has our manifestation there is a need to build the skills to observe the movement of thoughts to build the resilience and what is the known category of knowledge coming from the past the memories of the past which is in the future and the dreams of the sorry the memories of past which is in the present and the dreams of future which is in the present for both the point of intersection is the present so there is a need to live in the present and think and reflect that how to address the fears anxieties or how to address the miseries which is coming from the second world the second arrow and third arrow and the psychological world and in this process if we are little stressed that stress must be respected because that stress gives us opportunity to take us to next level of peace tranquility to create to take us to the new equilibrium where we find the new meaning but what a psychologist brahm says that it is a free choice paradigm that whatever we choose we try to prove the superiority of our choices over whatever we have not chosen so there is a need to reflect and work on this in the present times thanking god i find myself fortunate enough to witness this because this experience is very humbling it is making us to go to close to spirituality it is giving a jolt to my egocentricity and it is help breaking a intellectual debate that will technology take over the humanity will technology take over the mankind people who were working in the domain of the technology and human interaction like uh, shubana zubaf alec ross brin jolson meki who were talking about that in times to come the machines 
will regulate and run everything. But this present Corona time has made us to realize कि हमारे सामर्थ्य की एक सीमा होती है लॉन्ग बैक आई रेड अ नॉवेल बाय भगवती चरण वर्मा द टाइटल ऑफ द नॉवेल वॉज सबाही नचावत राम गुसाइन टू मेक अस अंडरस्टैंड दैट वॉट एवर टेक्नोलॉजिकल प्रोग्रेस वी हैव डन वी हैव नॉट बीन एबल टू win control nature and this present model of development which has been very anthropocenic based on human desires all development are hovering around human fulfillment of human desires human needs this time of corona time has made us realize that we our developments are very dwarfish and the design of the nature is any day any time is superior to the desire of mankind and this experience to me comes as big lifetime disclaimer that whatever works whatever achievement whatever so called growth and development whatever advancement i have made we have made humanity has made that works only when conditions are normal and in abnormal situation like this the powerful of most powerful like us germany britain italy they have been able to kneel down and for development of individual abraham maslow says that three things are required one what has been created by an individual second what is given to an individual and third what has been discovered by the individual so it is time to make self discovery what part of the self which has not been discovered in the past it is time to revisit and discover in a, a very good book happiness hypothesis which i read during this lockdown period the author janathan heat says that we are appearing to be sitting on the elephant and the elephant an animal wants to move in one direction governed by his own desires but we the rider on the elephant we have to decide that where elephant has to move but over a period of time we have let the elephant to take us wherever the elephant wants to take us and in the whole process the self of ours was lost this novel corona has given us opportunity to prove ourselves that we are good riders who will control the elephant not being controlled by the elephant the senescence the aging diseases in present times have got new energy to check for the degeneration rather to get reju rejuvenated and this experience of today 
must help us to become a better human being tomorrow. The tomorrow's grounding should be done on the basis of the experience of today as adulthood is, is made on the foundations of the childhood. Therefore, this experience we should not let go waste. And what the a priori model of life, given model of life, which comes from the Bayesian terminology, this given model, a priori model of life, this must be revisited in the light of new generated data to create a revised model of life, which would be better, which would be more accommodating, which would be more inclusive. And often it is said that whatever the progress is, the technological progresses we have made in present times, it was a fiction in yesterday's movies. This is giving rise that fantasy has possibility of creating a reality, breeding a reality. And I refer a poetry by one of the shires who has gone for seeing time in a new way. It is very fantasized. I'm sharing with you. The title of the poem is Ye Wakt Kya Hai. Javed Saab ki ye poetry hai. Ye wakt kya hai? Ye kya hai aakhir jo musalsal guzar raha hai? Jab na guzara tha, to kaha tha? Kahi to hoga? Guzar gaya hai, to ab kaha hai? Kahi to hoga? Kaha se aya? Kidhar gaya hai? Ye kab se, kab tak ka silsila hai? Ye wakt kya hai? कभी कभी मैं ये सोचता हूं कि चलती गाड़ी से पेड़ देखो तो ऐसा लगता है कि दूसरी सिमत जा रहे हैं मगर हकीकत में पेड़ अपनी जगह खड़े हैं तो क्या ये मुमकिन है कि सारी सदियां कतार अंदर कतार अपनी जगह खड़ी हो ये वक्त साकित हो और हम ही गुजर रहे हों इस एक लम्हे में सारे लम्हे सारी सदियां छुपी हुई हों न कोई आइंदा न गुजिश्ता जो हो चुका है वो हो रहा है जो होने वाला है हो रहा है मैं सोचता हूं कि क्या ये मुमकिन है कि सच ये है कि सफर में हम हैं गुजरते हम हैं जिसे समझते हैं हम गुजरता है वो थमा है गुजरता है या थमा हुआ है इकाई है या बटा हुआ है है मुजलमत या पिघल रहा है किसे खबर है किसे पता है ये वक्त क्या है सो व्हाट द नोशन ऑफ टाइम वी आर हैविंग इन आवर लाइफ द लीनियर नोशन ऑफ टाइम व्हिच इज स्प्रेड ओवर पास्ट प्रेजेंट एंड फ्यूचर दिस नीड्स टू बी revised this notion needs to be revised with another philosophy of time the time is circular never ending no beginning no end and in order to understand that it is worth referring abraham maslow who writes in his book that book also i read during this period toward a psychology of being that there is a need to have b cognition he talks about b cognition and d cognition 
he says that we need to have b cognition being cognition and b cognition is deficient cognition he says that if we are having the b cognition we are able to interact with the environment we are able to look at self actualization self fulfillment look at nirvana and we are taking the witness of achievement contrarily when we are referring to decognition we are taking the witness of absence that is the becoming so there is a need to be not to become if we are becoming we are more governed by the situation we are more governed by the elephant and if you are being we are more acting as a rider and now i will come to an end quoting a poetry of khalil zibran he says that when you crush the apple with your teeth say to it in your heart your seed shall live in my body buds of your tomorrow shall blossom in my heart and your fragrance shall be my breath and together we shall live joyous through all the seasons i am thankful to every one of you for giving this opportunity to share my vague ideas with you that how to look at how to reflect the present times which is full of uncertainties thank you so much thank you sir for this enlightening and informative session all of us will be able to make most of your session and put all your suggestions into practice thank you sir thank you a lot sir and i also thank uh, professor harminder dhan department who is with us throughout the session thank you sir thank you so much Anupriya, will you take questions or? Uh, sir, Thank we you have messaged you some questions. Yeah. Uh, What's it? There were three types of uh, questions coming, Anupriya. One related to economy, other related to education, and third talking about how to cope with. Yes, sir. About. Uh, economy do i not be going into details uh, i'll be speaking on uh, the economic aspect of uh, this crisis on 5th of uh, may when i'll be addressing the gathering at the uh, international conference which is being organized by keith bhubaneswar but just to refer that though the world economy is shattered and uh, this lockdown not making us to go to workplace not making factories to get open this will certainly create a very bad economic conditions but at the same time it will give rise to lot many economic opportunities which are to be tapped and the entrepreneurial mind will i'm sure would be able to address it and one of the examples is zomato which used to supply meals in the present crisis time has moved to become a supplier of groceries so whatever is available to zomato a bit investment in thinking is making them survive in present times so similarly though there would be loss but 
with some innovation we would be able to make it up of course this will take some time the second uh, pro issue came the second category of the questions are coming from uh, education where the students have asked that what will happen to exams the teachers they are anxious to know that will this online be replacing offline people are showing their concerns anxieties about career as things are very fluid therefore nothing could be said with certainty i'm sharing my peace of mind that we are basically trained up till now to have a place teaching the present times which is making us to move from place teaching which is practically not possible to go for online teaching but with the present regimen the place teaching cannot be replaced with the online teaching because this online teaching it has a entirely new schema new regimen therefore until and unless whatever is required whatever the ingredients are there for that online teaching if those things are not embedded in our present system i see a bleak possibility of place learning getting replaced with online learning because the kind of engagements which this online teaching needs to be created for students the kind of quizzes the kind of questions which to, are making us to test the cognitive ability of the students if we will not invest in that we are using it just as a as time requires as we are not able to go to that so therefore in present times i don't see that it would be completely replacing but of course we have been able to i talk about myself i have never used google meet before i have never used zoom before it is making me to understand that where i am placed but it's a full course it's a full regimen if it is not brought in we will not be able to make a departure for examination as far as delhi university is concerned the decision has not been taken there are both views that there should be online examination or offline examination so how examination uh, would be done only as the time unfolds maybe by next week university would be able to take some decision about the career there is nothing to worry because it is not like this that in one part of the world things are moving at faster pace and in another part of the world things are moving at the slower pace yahan to sabhi log ek hi ghoda gaadi mein baithe hue hain koi train mein aur hawai jahaz mein nahi baitha hua hai so the the career what we are looking there in the organizations they are also facing the problems which uh, the education uh, sector is facing so i think the, you will not have any kind of marginalization as far as the career is concerned maybe the new kind of uh, uh, avenues will emerge about coping with the present times uh, i think uh, this word coping should be replaced with the accepting the present times the more and more we talk about the coping with the present times the more and more we talk about uh, accommodating the present times the more and more we are 
putting ourselves on the receiving end but there is a need to bring ourselves on the giving end and accepting this reality the way it is happening acceptance of this reality that will give us more power more courage more strength to take us to the next level of learning next level of equilibrium where the life would be better that is all from my side anupriya thank you sir thank you so much for your wonderful lecture thank you so much anupriya thank you everybody thank you gantosh ji thank you sir thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much thank you thank you ritesh ji shukriya shukriya dhanyawad बहुत अच्छा लगा आपको सुन करके और मैंने गलत नहीं कहा था आप कवि किस्सा गो और पता नहीं क्या क्या है तो <laughs> सारी झलक आपके व्याख्यान में दिखाई दी थैंक यू सो मच शुक्रिया थैंक यू थैंक सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सर हाँ जी बोलिए आप ओवर कर दो मीटिंग थैंक यू सो मच वेलकम थैंक यू रविंद्र